this industry and I value so much the people in it. Um, I've come to know so many incredible people over the last 35 years. It's, uh, it's just it's hard to imagine. I, I mostly feel grateful. Um, I've had an incredible, incredible set of opportunities. Uh, so it's in the spirit of gratitude that I want to share a few thoughts about my time working in the exhibition and conferences industry. And I have to say, after about 35 years of this, uh, surviving is the first one. Uh, but um, I believe everything we do in this industry, if it's logistics, if marketing, selling, entertaining, hospitality, uh, our satisfaction is really driven by people. And all of our success comes down to people. So I always say this is a people business. You can't lose sight of that. Um, that's what we do. Um, I've witnessed time and time again uh, throughout my career how the events industry uh, is really uniquely positioned to fulfill this human longing to be sort of part of something bigger. Uh, it's what we do here every day. Uh, the work we do brings people together uh, and it really engenders commerce, learning, progress, innovation, and goodwill. Um, our legacy uh, from the ancient Greek Agora bazaars to the 19th century world fairs to today's trade shows is all about connecting people. And that really did get us through the pandemic. Um, the unity we found as an industry uh, drove us to act together and we prevailed. And I'm really confident that the continued success of this industry is a real promise. So uh, you all should be really proud of yourselves. Um, I believe we will continue to be the conduit that connects people uh, in ways that maybe never had been imagined. And I, I believe this because I've seen it before, um, back in the day when Sam and I were young, Sam said 30 years ago. Um, <laughs> I wasn't as distinguished looking back then, um, I had hair. Uh, the events industry was really experiencing unprecedented disruption. Uh, the world of pipe and drape uh, exhibits was about to be blown away by technology. And most people didn't understand it. In fact, I tried to explain it once here in this room, and you guys all thought I was crazy. Um, you know, the, the concept of computers, electronic gaming, gadgets, Gary knows this better than most. Uh, you know, we're often dismissed as a fad. Um, and of course, history proves <clears throat> that the commercial viability of the internet launched a wave of new technology companies and services that really changed business models and changed the world. And I was incredibly lucky, uh, like many young people, I was looking to be part of something bigger than myself, and I landed in the middle of something huge. Uh, my career in hospitality took me to California in the late 80s, uh, just as various experts in the nascent tech industry were looking for ways to connect. And uh, my first job in this industry was with Jonathan Siebold, the founder of Siebold Seminars, who really accelerated the concept of hosting events to discuss the explosion of computer technology and specifically electronic publishing with the promise that we would all be publishers someday, uh, which if you've been on social media, you're a publisher. And then I got to work with the late Dan Lynch. Uh, the New York Times just did a piece on Dan. He recently passed away, but he's really credited with really helping commercialize the internet's viability. Um, you know, he created an environment where IT professionals and could come together and really prove out network interoperability, uh, which really led to the adoption of TCP IP protocols and events like interop, uh, really making the basic internet infrastructure work. Um, that was a real blessing. I got to work with uh, Mark Andreessen and we helped launch Mosaic, which became Netscape, uh, which was the definitive and first browser for the World Wide Web. Um, I got to move to Japan and work with SoftBank and build the largest IT event in the region. There's another good picture of me when I was young. Uh, and I have to say that experience changed my life in ways that are probably hard to explain, but I really learned to have a learner's mindset. Uh, everybody should live in a foreign country and experience what that feels like. Uh, I was then tapped uh, to work with the team to create Java One for Sun Microsystems, which was an event designed to capture, teach, and convert early internet, internet developers to create a universal language for the emerging internet. And um, from that, I got to experience the fear and joy of building my first uh, agency. Uh, and we were the number one agency in the tech industry and didn't even know it. And we worked with uh, groups to create Bluetooth and did Web 2.0 and, and a lot of really fun things. And then ultimately, uh, SoftBank purchased us, and then we acquired Comdex, uh, 
which at the time was the leading event for desktop computing around the world. And we became a not so small tech media darling with really the most significant assets at the time. Maybe Gary, don't heckle, heckle me. Um, we didn't, uh, we, uh, uh, in the tech space. And you know, we really were helping clients uh, really create their own experiences at the same time. And of course, all of that led me to Freeman, um, which has been a tremendous blessing for me. Uh, the people of Freeman share my personal values. It's a trusted brand. Uh, it's an innovative culture. It's a platform for growth. And I knew that we could find new ways to help our clients transform and build their businesses. And I'm really, really proud of the, la of the last 15 years and the work we've done uh, to support our customers in innovative ways. So all of that to say that I've been incredibly lucky. I've had an amazing run uh, in this industry and I'm, I'm super appreciative. Um, but I'm reminded that none of this would have been possible without that disruption caused by technology and that boom more than 35 years ago. And none of the technology would have mattered if the right people hadn't connected. And uh, they did connect and we all became part of something bigger. And I think it creates opportunity. Uh, today we're seeing another technology uh, driven disruption that parallels those early days. And while I'm glad to be retiring because it's the right time for me, I'm also envious of everybody in this room, especially the younger people because you're in for a thrilling ride um, that points to unprecedented opportunity for everyone in our industry. I know some people are cautious, and I think that's good, but I'm sure everyone's seen how opportunity and obstacles are just opposite sides of the same coin, and we must stay open-minded as we think about this. Um, and I, I think the opportunities we need to seize today are really related to trust and technology. And, um, Trust is more important than ever, and yet it's never been more fragile. Um, we saw in the most recent Freeman research that Ken shared earlier that in-person events rank higher than all other marketing channels. And as Sam pointed out, it jumped from 75% to 80%. So what you do really matters. And um, I would say that it's, it's also really nice to see that 92% of people plan to attend more events. And so I think that's good news for everyone in here. But as we've heard from the different speakers today, uh, you know, getting everyone there is one thing, earning trust and keeping it is another. And so I think it's really, really important. Um, I'm a student of Maslow. Uh, I like to joke, I'm teased sometimes that I preach the gospel of Maslow uh, because I really like to understand human behavior and understand what people need. And I think we're in that business of helping people figure out what they need. And today's headlines are filled with examples of what happens when people sense a threat to their basic needs. And I think we see this every day. Things can get hostile. And as in industry leaders, we are stewards of the trust that lets us prosper and we must take advantage uh, uh, and take care of people's basic needs. We, ha we have to take care of our employees, our customers, our community, and everyone in our ecosystem because deserving trust means that we empower them to be their best selves and we never take them for granted. So we can use technology to earn and grow trust or we can misuse it and undermine, <laughs> and undermine everything that we've worked so hard to build Technology can really help us personalize engagements as never before, making them more relevant and more memorable. Uh, but the ubiquity of tech and the daily flood of bigger and better things has raised expectations and we cannot fail to meet them. We're all consumers now. Uh, and here's a short list of applications where I believe technology can best serve our common interests. So first is research, research to drive strategy. We need to anticipate what our constituents need and offer it before they demand it. And this will build trust and preempt dissatisfaction. Simplification, using technology to make it easier so that smaller players can reap the same benefits from events as the big players. Accessibility, making our event content more meaningful to more people through virtual technology, broadcast, cost, broadcasting, and redistribution. Uh, we have an opportunity to give diverse people access to content that we create, people who might have been excluded due to distance, travel costs, family commitments, health restrictions, or special needs. I think personalization is critical, uh, making our experiences more relevant and memorable and valuable to those who participate in person. Um, what if we actually talk to people like we knew them? 
uh, imagine the premium level experiences that you could really offer to the right people. And um, I think we can't lose sight of social responsibility and use technology to help us up our game in social. Uh, and in the communities we serve, environmental justice, representation, safety, security, these are all areas where we can develop the means and the metrics to do more and do better. And ultimately, it all comes down to optimization. We can embrace new technology in ways that improves every aspect of the event, from registration systems to content creation to data analytics. Uh, all of this can enable continuous improvement. Um, this includes AI, as we better understand how to connect people, maybe more people than ever. Uh, technology can help us earn trust and make people proud to be part of something bigger than themselves. I saw the pride in people in, 90s, in the 90s as we were you know, playing in this emerging tech industry, and I see, this, I see the same pride in people today. So I'll just ask you to humor me and consider a little bit of advice. It comes from the heart and it's offered with gratitude. We live in an insanely divisive time. Everything seems polarizing, but look at us. Uh, here we are, unified around what we do with the idea that what we do matters. Um, we can build bridges that reach higher, that span the things that divide us. Uh, people come to events to uh, seek experiences, learning, network, commerce, and if we think about all the individuals at all of the events that we produce around the world, uh, it's pretty massive. So, uh, you know, my plea for the future is never underestimate the power of live events uh, to push the world forward, not just our individual businesses. And I believe it's still the best tool society has to connect people in meaningful ways and ways that supersede the forces of polarization by harnessing their desire to be part of something bigger and something better. So um, last thing I'll say is we build trust for solidarity, for progress, for innovation. It's hard work uh, and it's the best we do. Uh, so thank you for letting me be part of something bigger uh, than I could have ever imagined. I have every confidence in you and let's take the industry to the next level. So thank you all very, very much.